Duluth's first new mayor in 12 years prepares to be sworn in. After serving a 10-year prison sentence, a Northland woman is free. And the winter weather is here. We'll have some tips for dealing with those frigid temperatures. Good evening. Today, the adopted daughter of Glenn Sheen heiress, Elizabeth Congdon, was released from prison. Marjorie Congdon Caldwell Hagen was suspected but never convicted in the murders of Elizabeth Congdon and her nurse in 1970s. Marjorie has been serving time in an Arizona prison for the past 10 years for arson. Assistant St. Louis County Attorney John DeSanto recently helped write a book about the murders. He says Marjorie's release comes with apprehension. Well, I know there's a, much apprehension especially among uh, the family members uh, and, uh, and people close to her. Uh, there's some apprehension, quite frankly, on my part, uh, but, but uh, not significant apprehension. We just don't know. She's very unpredictable, predictably unpredictable in, in what she does, given her sociopathic nature. Marjorie was suspected of setting up to 30 fires in Arizona during the early 1990s and was convicted on two counts of arson in 1992. The Department of Homeland Security has put a major anti-terrorism tool in place at airports across the nation today. It's a new high-tech system that targets foreigners entering the U.S. Steve Handelsman has the story from Washington. The new system is greeting visitors to the U.S. today at 115 airports and 14 seaports. A camera takes a photo, and the digital pad records fingerprints. In seconds, the system can recognize if the visitor's ID is invalid or if he or she is on a terror watch list. Secretary of Homeland Security Tom Ridge says America remains welcoming but wary. In a post-9-11 world, we have been forced to find new ways to confront new challenges. This new way is called U.S. Visit. Exempt from the scanning are citizens of these nations and 17 more whose nationals need no visa to visit the U.S. Again today, British Air Flight 223 to Washington was delayed in London while police checked for terrorists. The fear of a new Al-Qaeda attack by airliner remains high. And Osama bin Laden himself might have issued a coded attack order on the audio tape played Sunday by Al Jazeera Arab TV. CIA analysts say today it was bin Laden on the tape, meaning the Al-Qaeda leader is still alive and gunning for America. What we're really worried about is whether or not this tape is in fact a ghost signal or presages a new uh, terrorist attack by Al-Qaeda against American interests. U.S. officials say what they call the noise from terror elements convinces them that bin Laden plans something soon. Troubling intelligence from spy satellites, from phone intercepts, and from human sources all add up, experts say, to the worst threat since 9-11. From Washington, I'm Steve Handelsman, NBC News. For now, the new scanning system has been put in place at airports and seaports. But by the end of the year, it will be at the busiest land ports on U.S. borders as well. The coldest air of the new year is with us this week, and it's finding a few folks unprepared. Among the hardest hit by the Arctic blast are drivers. Cars can be difficult to start when the temperature dips below zero. The experts say there's one simple device that solves the problem effectively, the engine block heater. It gets the engine warm faster, it keeps the oil thinner. It works better for the, the overall condition of the engine and oil, and it's better for a cold startup. Cold weather is also tough on pipes, pets, and school kids. At 6, we'll put you in touch with tips for protecting all of those from the chill. Governor Tim Pawlenty has released his plan to improve education in Minnesota. The plan includes additional funding for Internet access for students in rural areas and grants for innovation and cooperation between school districts. He also wants to reward students who demonstrate academic leadership. Also, for schools that underperform on a regular basis, he wants some corrective action to be taken to make sure the schools offer a quality education. Well, temperatures didn't even make it past zero across most of the Northland today. Mm -hmm. And Paul is just getting out to the weather garden. It's got to be mighty cold out there about now. It is cold out here. I've been delaying this as long as I can. Nine degrees below zero, and I've got this thing in my face, too, so let's get rid of that. There we go. Nine degrees below zero. This is actually kind of in the middle as far as temperatures across the area. Let's take a look at those temperatures. Seven degrees below zero up on the hill at the airport. It's 11 below in Grand Forks. These temperatures are pretty close to the highs for the day. This is a very cold day. 
You add in the wind, though, feels like 28 degrees below zero at the airport, 33 below in Grand Forks and also in Williston, North Dakota. This morning, International Falls had an air temperature of 29 below, but the wind chill is about 50 below. There is a wind chill advisory in effect tonight. Temperatures are going to be back into the teens below zero. We are going to see some clouds moving in from the northwest. That'll keep us from getting as cold as we otherwise would, and maybe a few flurries through the day tomorrow as well. We'll talk more about that when I come back in a few minutes. Mark and Michelle. Okay, Paul, thank you. Herb Bergson Jr. will be sworn into office tonight. He'll then tell Duluth his ideas for the future. Royal Day is live at the deck where the mayor-elect will give his State of the City address. Royal. Well, Mark and Michelle, soon this ballroom will be full as mayor-elect Herb Bergson will speak to Duluthians about his strategy for tackling some of Duluth's biggest issues. Now, this is the first time in about 12 years that Duluth will hear from a new mayor, and Bergson has said that he sees a lot of changes for our future. And joining me live now to talk about those changes is Mayor-elect Herb Bergson, who will be mayor in about an hour and a half. The State of the City Address is about looking into the future. Can you tell us what you see for Duluth's future? Well, we'll, we'll talk about uh, uh, some changes, some, some high-tech changes that, uh, that uh, I believe will... Um, will bring Duluth into uh, a new age, things that um, uh, we've scratched the surface on before, but uh, because of uh, some of my uh, experience and knowledge in, uh, uh, in the field of uh, high-tech crime, actually, it really uh, put me in contact with some very bright people uh, who uh, have uh, really given me some wonderful ideas about how to better sell Duluth uh, and make it a, an even more interesting place to come. And when you're campaigning, economic development was a huge issue for you. Can you talk about if you're going to touch on that tonight at all? Yes, and uh, actually one of my first meetings tomorrow will be with a small business that uh, is interested in moving into Duluth. So um, looking forward to that meeting. And we've been under the leadership of Mayor Doty for the past 12 years. Do you see yourself going in a different direction than he took? Well, we'll do some things differently. Uh, Mayor Doty did some, some good things uh, and, and deserves a lot of credit. Twelve years is, is a big sacrifice. You give up that kind of time to, to uh, the citizens of, of Duluth, and your, you and your family both deserve a pat on the back because they, they gave up a lot of time. Okay. Thank you, Mayor-elect Herb Berkson, who will be sworn into office in about an hour and a half. Now, he isn't the only Duluth politician that will be sworn into office. Two city councilors will also take office tonight. Those city councilors are Lori Johnson and Tim Little. As far as that council vacancy left by Berkson's new position, the city council continues to interview the final six candidates. They will then make a final decision on the 12th. Now, tonight, it is all about the new mayor-elect Herb Berkson, who will take office in about an hour and a half. He will then give his first state of the city address, his first address, as Duluth Mayor. Mark and Michelle. All right, thank you very much, Royal. After 14 years of denials, Pete Rose has admitted to betting on baseball while managing the Cincinnati Reds. The career hits leader admits to gambling four or five times a week beginning in 1987. He hopes the confession, which comes in his new book, will help end his ban in baseball. Because of the ban, he is ineligible be to be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Rose says he never bet against the teams he managed. During its first full day on Mars, NASA's Spirit rover locked in on Earth with its most powerful antenna. This allowed the spacecraft to beam these photos directly back to NASA. Included in the photos was the first view of the sun from the red planet and a 3D panoramic view of the surface. The rover is asleep right now, but will begin working again after the Martian dawn in about one hour. Still to come on News 6 Live at 5, we'll take a look at the symptoms of a disease that could take you by surprise even if you think you're healthy. A cutting-edge museum pays tribute to the loud buzzing of chainsaws. And a high-tech tournament keeps Northland kids interested in science. Keeping you in touch with today's news with Michelle Lee, Mark Mallory, meteorologist Paul Hagen, and special reports from Barbara Riles. You're watching News 6, live at 5. The best-selling trucks in America. The best-selling cars in America. The best-selling sport utilities in America. And to keep it that way, it's your Northland Ford dealer's best of the best year-end clearance. Get into a new Ford Explorer. Now with a $500 holiday bonus plus $3,500 cash back for a total of $4,000 cash back. Or choose Ford Taurus with $3,000 cash back. It's the best deals on the best vehicles in America during the best of the best year-end clearance at your Northland Ford dealer. Short on 
McDonald's dollar menu. Hot sandwiches, tasty desserts, and more. That's a lot for a little. What's new about Ziploc freezer bags? Tired of throwing away freezer burned food? The new improved Ziploc freezer bag can help. Our unique freeze guard seal has an extra thick layer of plastic right where you want it the most, at the seal. Ziploc freezer bags help keep freshness in and freezer burn out. Hi, Pam. You cooking out too? The improved Ziploc freezer bag, now with the freeze guard seal. Redesigned with you in mind. SC Johnson, a family company. Keep your new toys and gifts running with plenty of Rayovac batteries from Menards. Eight packs of long-lasting double or triple-A alkaline batteries are free after $2 rebate. Keep your water softener running efficiently with Morton Salt. System Saver helps prevent the buildup of harmful mineral deposits. A 50-pound bag is just $3.99. 40 pounds of super rust remover is only $4.49. Pour in big savings from Menards. Save big money at Menards. If you've never heard of metabolic syndrome, you're not alone. But it's estimated that three out of 10 American adults have it and don't know it. The syndrome is a new pattern of symptoms that can lead to heart attacks, strokes, and even diabetes. As Dr. Tom Hopkins shows us, the trick to staying healthy is knowing how to spot the signs. I'm a thriver in good health. I don't smoke, don't drink anything. So. Until recently, Michael Glenn thought his health was pretty good. To hear he had metabolic syndrome was actually quite a shock. I heard about it through my employment, but I never thought I'd be diagnosed with it. The news came during a routine physical exam when Kaiser's Dr. John Hernreed noticed a pattern. What I saw was that his blood pressure was slightly elevated. He had a low HDL or good cholesterol, and that's an independent risk factor. He was pretty sedentary, and that, and also his uh, waist circumference was uh, over 40 inches. Just Viewed individually, the signs don't seem serious. Slightly elevated blood pressure. Slightly elevated blood sugar. Not even enough to be diabetes. Slightly elevated triglycerides. Or maybe your HDL. Your good cholesterol isn't as high as it should be. And abdominal fat. A waist circumference of 40 inches or more for men and 35 inches or more for women. Look closely. If you have even three of the five signs, you may have metabolic syndrome. Any combination is a giant arrow pointing in one direction, trouble. It leads to not only diabetes and heart attacks, but it's an act of inflammation in the body. That's what leads to heart disease and, and stroke as well. And also it leads to um, excessive clotting of the blood. Some patients with metabolic syndrome go on to have full-blown heart attacks, and many develop diabetes within five to 10 years, opening the door to blindness, kidney problems, even diabetes-related amputations. Wanted to uh, share your labs with the you. The focus is now on prevention. Cholesterol-lowering medications and an aspirin every day. And by eating more wholesome foods and hitting his favorite trail, he's also taken two inches off of his waistline. Uh, when I tell patients a lot of exercise, uh, I talk to them about 40 minutes, six days a week, and it doesn't have to be um, you know, high-speed bicycling or anything like that. It can be a good, brisk walk. His blood pressure, blood sugar, and cholesterol all down. Michael Glenn is actually reversing his metabolic syndrome before it's too late. I think about how lucky I am to have uh, my life in good health. Trust in your doctor first. I trust mine. I'm a living witness. It'll help you. I'm Dr. Tom Hopkins for NBC News. If you suspect you may have metabolic syndrome, ask your doctor about tests that could help you find out. And still to come, four sloppy joes get cleaned up to let you know what's for dinner. And how long will these frigid temperatures last? Paul's in next to let us know.
DQ's got everybody practicing their half-court shot. That's because it's buy a basket, make a basket for $50,000 this January only at Dairy Queen. Just order a chicken strip basket for only $3.99. And while you're there, register to sink a half-court shot for a cool fifty grand at a Timberwolves game. Hurry in and DQ something different. help you develop a better way to stop. Call or visit quitplan.com. You can stay in touch on your way to work with News 6. Every weekday morning on the KQ Morning Show with Bill and Jason, get news and weather from your one source for news. News 6. What you watching? Love action flicks. Check out Charter. Get the lowest priced digital quality movies. Sign up now and get two months free. Go where satellite can't. Call 1 888 get Charter and get hooked. Me? <clears throat> Me? <laughs> you are so beautiful. You are too. In your own special way. But no matter what happens out there, wow, let's hear it for a hug, there are huh? no losers. All right, <laughs> next up, Miss Southside. Meteorologist Paul Hagen is certified by the American Meteorological Society. Well, we're all back from vacations yes. in all points, northeast, south, and west. And we came back to an icebox. Mm -hmm. That's fun. I was in Chicago on Friday and it was 61 degrees. And today the high is six below oh, here. Oh, man. That's uh, nine below right now. It's nine below, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's been a bit of an adjustment. You were outside Detroit. Yeah, it was 55. 55 on Sunday when I went to the Lions game. And I was down in Moose Lake. and <laughs> It was... <laughs> Probably about two, two degrees warmer. Okay. That's oh, about uh, it. Fair enough. Yeah. It's just been cold. We have a cool sky cam time lapse out of it, though. So we can take a look at the bat, I guess. It looks icy. <laughs> it looks icy, but it's still open water. Yeah. For the most part. Now, so a year there is ago, some shipping going on. A year ago, that was... Uh, oh, that was frozen solid. Yeah. 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 So it's going to be frozen solid pretty quick because this cold air is not going anywhere. We're not going to threaten freezing any time within the six-day forecast and probably for a while after that. Still some shipping, though. That is not going to last a whole lot longer. Let's sit out in the weather garden. I've been putting this off as long as I can. Oh, it's not pleasant out here. Nine degrees below zero. The wind chill is in the 20s below zero because we have winds out of the west about 15 miles an hour. Current conditions right now, exactly 15 miles an hour. The dew point is in the low 20s, below zero. So theoretically, we could get that cold later on tonight. We're not going to, though, because we are going to have some cloud cover moving in late tonight, and that's going to give us the chance for some flurries throughout the day tomorrow. Temperatures right now, mostly below zero. It is exactly zero in Superior. One above at the harbor, that's the warm spot. Ten below right now, the cold spot in Hibbing. Wind chills, you add in that 15 mile an hour wind, it feels like 28 below up on the hill at the airport, 30 below in Hibbing. That's the coldest wind chill on this map, but you go a little farther to the northwest, it feels like 41 degrees below zero right now up in Waskish. Not very warm. Temperatures across the country, big contrast down to our south. Pretty powerful front move through there. Dropped about six inches of snow on Chicago, just off to our southeast. So we just saw a trace of snow here in the Twin Ports last night and lots of cold air up on the other side of the Canadian border. That's why we're not going to see the cold air leaving us anytime soon, is because we have to push it way up to the north. We are going to see temperatures warming up a little bit as we head into the end of the week, but probably into the 20s by the weekend. That's the best we can hope for. Big storm system out to our east continues to move away from us. Lots of sunshine today, so it was a pretty day to look at from the inside side of a window. Some clouds out to our northwest. These are the ones that are going to move in and give us the chance for flurries tomorrow, but it's literally too cold for any kind of significant accumulation. So maybe a dusting, if that probably just some spotty flurries. Next chance of significant snow, and it's not going to be all that significant, probably not until Sunday. Cloud radar cast shows the clouds thickening up later on tonight. It's still going to be windy tomorrow, and there is a wind chill advisory in effect tonight. If you're going to go out, make sure you dress in layers. Don't spend too much time outside. It's going to be plain old cold. Low temperatures dropping back down into the mid-teens below zero. 
flurries tomorrow, highs cracking zero degrees. So we're making a little bit of progress. Six-day forecast shows temperatures bouncing back into the teens by Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. 20s Saturday and Sunday with that chance for some light snow showers for the last half of the weekend. Mark and Michelle. Okay, Paul, thank you. And still to come, we'll recap today's top stories. Plus, we'll take a look at a museum dedicated to a tool of the loggers trade. I'm John Miller. Coming up, make sure you cut out some time for this one-of-a-kind museum. It's way off the beaten path. Hi, Preston here again. You know about folks Woodland, Kenwood, Lakeside, and Lignell pharmacies. Now that we've added Newman's Pharmacy in the West End, we really can deliver anywhere in the Twin Ports. We go here. We go here. We go here. And now we go here too. Here's what the doctor ordered with Falk's Pharmacy. Ready for an amazing deal from Pizza Hut? Get a meat lover's or veggie lover's pizza for $8.99. And you don't get some skimpy one-topping pizza. You get it the Pizza Hut way with lots of toppings. And I mean lots of toppings. Wow. Now that is a lot of toppings. Yep. Practically every meat on the planet or every veggie in the garden. Who else would Pizza Hut piles it on like this for just $8.99? So come on now, gather around the good stuff. Catch Home Furniture's super no-interest financing offer and New Year's sale. Choose your new office or entertainment pieces now, and you'll pay zero financing costs until 2006. That's two whole years. And what prices? This entertainment wall unit, mission style, for just $12.99. Or choose from luxurious executive desks to a cozy corner armoire for your home office, starting at just $5.99. Catch this sale and get interest-free financing for two years at Home Furniture. It is not just Ask Dr. Phil Day, it's Ask Dr. Phil and Robin Day. Has he ever made any mistakes? Everyone would like to know when the cameras are off. He is a work in progress. Dr. Phil, my father calls me to make sure the trash is out. He brings our mail in. We had a bad hailstorm one night, heard something, and when we looked outside, it was my father on the roof. You don't have enough to do. It's an all new Ask Dr. Phil. What is he really like? What are you, the FBI? Tomorrow at 3 on News 6. There's a new museum out west that's a cut above the rest. As John Miller reports, you can cut just about anything at this attraction. Here beneath the tall pines of southern Washington could be one of the most strange and least visited tourist attractions in the world. Well, this is the room. You're going to run out of room here. But Wayne Sutton will never run out of chainsaws. A lifetime spent surrounded by and dealing in them, he's now the curator of Wayne's Chainsaw Museum. My first chainsaw that I got was essentially this machine here. That chainsaw led to another chainsaw, and another, 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 and another. Sort of like an unending chain in itself. That's right, it's an endless reel of chain, except for me it's endless reel of saws. So how many are there? Well, there's about five or six hundred in this room. Not to mention clocks, cups, and cards, trinkets and toys. That's my speed right there. Yeah, Charles Wolfe. Um, in about 1921, he got his first patent for an electrically powered chainsaw. Right. And an awfully safe looking thing, I might add. Awfully would be a good adjective to use there, yeah. Yeah. If I was to fire up one of these saws, roughly how long would it take me to saw my face off? Well, I would give you a little coaching first and try and prevent that all the That's all right. Where do you get a thousand chainsaws? I mean, sure, you get a guy who says, oh, you need this one, or I got an old saw in my garage, but a thousand? I've spent $500 on a chainsaw before. So when you go like on eBay, hey, honey, I found this killer McCullough on eBay. I gotta have it. That doesn't usually work. Really? No. But it should be noted, after 20-odd years of steel, Echo, Remington, McCullough, Wright, everything Dayton, and dated like Barker, Pioneer, and Titan, Wayne's still got one very supportive wife. And how many fingers? Ten. <laughs> Look at that. Not to mention an occasional field trip from the local senior center. That's right. Get out, get out the van and the walkers and, <laughs> and come on in. <laughs> and anybody else? Anybody else. Come on down. Wayne knows it may be a little cliched and corny to say so, but it's definitely the most cutting-edge museum you ever saw. <laughs> John Miller for NBC News. 
Still to come, we'll recap today's top stories. And four Sloppy Joes get together to plug Sloppy Joes. But first, this day in history. In 2000, a 15-year-old pilot deliberately crashed a small plane into a skyscraper in Tampa, Florida. Charles Bishop, flying solo, died in the crash. The incident came less than four months after hijackers crashed jetliners into the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. The 52-story building in downtown Tampa sustained no permanent damage. Officials ruled out terrorism, but people in Tampa and those watching television across the country received a chilling reminder. On this date in history, January 5th, 2002. NBC Tonight is all new and the hottest night on television. Starting with an all new Fear Factor. Oh, and we've got two words for you to win. Then an all new Las Vegas. It's championship fight night in the wildest city. A night where anything can happen. They took my leg. Then it's the anticipated premiere of Average Joe 2, Hawaii. Hawaii. All new Fear Factor, all new Las Vegas, and the premiere of Average Joe 2, Hawaii. NBC Tonight. Cash or charge? Here you go. It's all on the wrist. Mm. How about that one? You know it's January when you're maxed out. It's platinum. That's why Domino's gives you a deal when you need it most. Call Domino's now to order a large one-topping pizza for $9.99 and get an order of Cinestics free. That's a large one-topping pizza for just $9.99 and free Cinestics. Get the door. It's Domino's. The Faces. Lauren Larson. Officer Mike Blood. Scotty. One out of every three people will need blood. And you never know when you or someone you love might be the one. Memorial Blood Centers. It's about life. Come see Laser Vaudeville, juggling, magic, monsters, and more. The Los Angeles Times says it's a match made in entertainment heaven. Laser Vaudeville puts a high-tech twist on the art of juggling from the New York Times. Fire-breathing dragons, the ancient art of hoop rolling. If there's one show you can't miss, it's Laser Vaudeville. A great family gift idea. Charge tickets by phone. Call 722-2000. Here's a recap of today's top stories. In about an hour, Duluth will have a new mayor. When Herb Bergson gives his State of the City address tonight, it will be the first time Duluth has heard from a new mayor in 12 years. Bergson says he has big plans for the city. 71-year-old Marjorie Congdon Caldwell Hagen was released from prison today, and Arizona corrections officials say she'll be under unsupervised release for the remaining five years of her sentence. Hagen has been a household name in Minnesota since her mother, Elizabeth Congdon, was murdered in her Duluth mansion. It may seem like child's play, but some Northlanders are serious about their radio-controlled cars. Coming up at 6, we'll take you to a high-tech tournament. Racers gathered at the World of Wheels in Superior this weekend. They tested their skills, making the remote-controlled cars zoom around a carpeted track. A local club holds weekly races. Its president says the hobby's a lot of fun. Any, anybody can do it. It's a, it's a family-oriented sport. You can have... Uh anywhere from a nine-year-old kid to a, like I am, 50-year-old guy racing against each other out there. Tonight at 6, meet two Brainerd sisters who have really gotten into the sport. They travel around Minnesota and in Canada competing at races. Stars from the world of sports, comedy, and reality TV gathered in a sloppy Las Vegas or Los Angeles living room this week. Now, they're celebrating the one thing hey, they have in common. Hello. They're all named Joe. Joe. And they're all sloppy, if only on TV. Joe Frazier, Joe Theismann, Joe Piscopo, and Joe Millionaire were shooting a commercial for a meat sauce that can be used to make sloppy Joe sandwiches. The ad, which features the Joes as messy roommates, starts airing today. It's a good idea. Cute. Mm -hmm. And the NBC Nightly News is next. We'll see you back here at 6. Men's wardrobe provided by Mainstream Fashions. We suit your style. Located downtown Duluth. Weather Garden, designed by Peterson's Gardens and Landscapes. Located just a short drive southeast of Superior.